You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Are you struggling to skyrocket your career? Do you often miss the opportunity to get promoted? Or do you feel that you're trapped in a cycle of career stagnation? This is Promotion Protocol with your host, Dr. Kim Nugent. Kim is here with over 30 years experience as an innovative leadership coach, and she's helping people gain the confidence, communication skills, and success in their careers to ultimately assist them in enhancing their promotability. So now, please welcome the host of Promotion Protocol, Kim Nugent. Good afternoon, and thank you for listening to Promotion Protocol. I'm your host, Dr. Kim Nugent, and we, we are coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I'm very excited today because I have a guest, and her name is Christy Stratton, and she is a speaker, a coach, an instructor. She's also an accomplished 20-year leader in new home building and residential real estate. Christy's energetic and results-generating style combined with her expertise, will transform you and your teams from one with a me perspective to a we perspective. Christy doesn't believe in being boring. Her presentations are infused with personality and humor and attention-holding stories. She's a team member who will stick with you and your team well beyond the presentation. As an associate certified coach through the International Coach Federation, Christy is accredited to helping individuals, corporations, associations, universities, and more solidify what they learn in her presentations. She is an absolute lover of hiking, a bleed orange longhorn, an avid writer, and soon to be published author and voracious reader. Christy's mission is to assist others in making a significant impact in their lives and career through powerful people practices, which directly impact your bottom line. So welcome, Christy. Thank you, Kim. So glad to be here. So, you know, as I introduced you, I certainly know that you're a professional speaker and certified coach. I've heard you. So, but tell us more about that. I want our audience to know all about you. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share. You know, I just uh, love to speak with people to help them kind of, um, one of the things I love working with people on is is their values. And uh, oftentimes when we're looking at being more powerful as, you know, individual people, as professionals, we, we kind of, we, we forget to really go back to the basics. And I love to kind of dig in with people and talk to them and find out about their values. And when we know what we value, we, we end up being able to set better goals. And if we don't know what we value, we end up maybe living on somebody else's values. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think one of the things that I found in my own practice is, is that, you know, a lot of times we look at each other so differently and we compare, make those comparisons. But when you really get to core values of what people believe in, we find more similarities than differences. And I think your work in terms of really helping people really think through, reflect on, get clear about what their values are really is kind of the first step in making progress. But what would you say is your area of expertise? Well, you know, this may sound very general, but people. (laughs) And I really believe that people are, um, as you're talking about there, is we all come from a different perspective. And so um, I'm really, I guess the area of expertise is, is, getting in on the level with those, with the people, wherever they are, because everybody's story is different. Everybody's values are different. Their perspectives are different until we really get into that. Listen, you know, and, and, and repeat back what we think we may or may not understand. And until they tell us we understand something, um, we, we really 
don't know that person. And so it, it really is people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's let's talk a little bit more about that. So obviously you're speaking in front of groups a lot, working with uh, groups in terms of whether you're doing facilitation or training work and everything else. Is, so where do you typically start? When we talk about people, where do you start? Because people are so different. Yeah, you know, in the speaking realm, when I'm, when I'm talking to a group, I, I tend to get them to kind of look at current state, uh, especially working with a, a team at a corporation and kind of talking about, you know, what motivates them and what disempowers them. And when we be, we begin to see that, we see kind of where, again, they're starting from. And, and, and then, then we step into their values. We, we then kind of look at what the corporate values are. We look for corporate core values are, then we look at the people values. And as you said earlier, we end up seeing that they're more aligned than dissimilar, but it's really kind of, what is current state? How are they feeling about their role in their company, their position, that sort of thing? And until we get that on the table, we really don't know where to go from there. Same thing when I'm working with an individual and I'm coaching is I love to start kind of with, I call it a strategy session. And that means, you know, where are you and where do you want to go? What do you want more of? What do you want less of? Mm-hmm. I, I can understand that. And I, I would say going back to when you're working with corporate clients in particular, and alignment is really important to me. So in terms of aligning their personal values with corporate values, and that actually translates into engagement and retention, I think, first and foremost. But then if, if you're working with them, I think my experience also is, is that it shifts their attitude and it becomes a much more positive attitude. And so it's a win-win for everybody, I think, in the organization. Has that been your experience? Absolutely, and I, I just love talking about this. Last year, I spoke with a group and did this exact um, exercise, and you know, quite honestly, it was quite organic. Didn't really know where it would go. We started with their current state, and then we stepped into um, actually t- finding out what their values were. They had done an exercise on values, and we we had them kind of pop in through um, you know a system in the presentation pop in their values, and we saw like five core values of the individual people rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. we put that all on the walls, and we saw, we we put, I had them list um, what those core values look like in action. Mm -hmm. And then I introduced a, a, a sheet that had some words on it, and it turned out they didn't know it wasn't titled. It was the company core values. And they didn't even know what they were. And then I revealed wow. that it was actually the kind I know, right? <laughs> then I revealed it was the company core values. And then I had them do the same exercise, which was to go around the room, put the, put the, the values out there and list what those looked like in action. And then it, then it showed right there what was really, I had them do what was called a spacewalk and walk around all the, the space of the room and, and look at the core values. And then we, took the things that were dissimilar and similar and it turned out and I put them at the front of the room and uh, the what it this was just like this was the aha moment this was the uh, the kind of the the, the um, goosebumps goosebump moment and there was nothing on the dissimilar everything was aligned and and, and so absolutely you see that alignment and I saw it organically happen through doing these exercises and it this really showed right then that there was this big aha moment for each of them. And they're like, wow, we're, we're actually more in line with our company than we thought we were. So let's maybe then uh, step through this and figure out how we can work better together, how we can be more engaged because we're actually on the same page. I think that's beautiful, and I know that we have a lot of consultants and coaches and speakers that listen to this show each week, and one of the things I like to say is that every trainer knows this, that you have a framework, but every audience is different. You never know. That's always a surprising part, but also the rewarding part about what you do, and I believe that we're going to take a a commercial break and come back in a few minutes, but in the meantime, uh, this is a really great beginning, Christy, and I can't wait to learn more about some of the work that you're doing, so for the audience, please stay tuned. We'll take a break and we'll come back in just a few minutes and listen to more about what Christy Stratton has to say.
If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the real of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. This is BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you're listening to Promotion Protocol, hosted by Dr. Kim Nugent. And today my guest is Christy Stratton, who is a speaker, coach, and instructor, and her specialty area is powerful people practices. And Christy, you were talking a little bit about some of the things that you were doing, but I also know that you are an International Coach Federation Associate Certified Coach. Before I start talking to you about your clients, really wanted, we have a lot of listeners who, some are coaches that are certified and some are not. Can you talk a little bit about the value of going through the International Coaching Federation program? Yes, and I I just absolutely love to. So um, one of the things that the International Coach Federation does is it's the largest organization of professional coaches, of credentialed coaches, and uh, it's really the governing body that um, holds us accountable from an ethical standpoint. Um, but also, too, it is kind of the gold standard, the highest standard in education and professionalism. You know, a lot of people and, you know, totally, completely their, their, their efforts um, are, are right and just and so forth. But uh, oftentimes a lot of people think that coaching is advice giving. And mm-hmm. what we learned through the International Coach Federation is actually the definition in, in so many terms right now. Um, and you can see more at ICF.org. Uh, but um, it, it is actually the um, the partnering with the coachee, the client, to really um, get to what they want more of and less of what they don't. And, and I know that sounds kind of simplistic, but we believe uh, an ICF a trained coach believes that the the, the coachee actually has the answers with with uh, within themselves and. Meaning that we discover, we ask questions, we kind of dig in and find those answers that work for them. Because oftentimes we may actually say, you know, I want the advice. But when somebody else kind of, it's just our human nature, tells us what to do, even though we're asking (laughs) them to tell us what to do, (laughs) we kind of rebel and go, wait a second, I don't want you to tell me what to do. So what we do is we we really, you know, 90% of the time we're listening. We're listening for those nuggets. We're listening for those things that they're actually willing to do. And then we come alongside them, walk down the path, and then partner with them in creating the thing that works for them uh, as, as that individual person. Um, it, it was interesting. I just had this conversation. I, I posted out a little video from the International Coach Federation about coaching recently, and I had a, a fellow coach who is not ICF certified uh, send me a text message 
with regards to the post. And he said, you know, I just have a different opinion. I believe it's kind of telling them what to do. And I said, well, um, <laughs> and I shared with him that perspective. And, and, and so, um, yeah, we really believe that the, the coachee has the answers. It's our job to help them find it. I totally agree. And I think uh, a lot of times you know, you and I have both been asked about whether there's some benefit to being a certified coach, and I believe we both think that it, there's some benefit. I think in terms of the training, I think the uh, ability to ask questions and drill down for them to be able to internalize what's going on and be able to come up with those solutions. But I also think one of the things that sets them apart, ICF coaches, is the fact that there's that code of ethics and the code of conduct in terms of confidentiality, and I think that's a very important aspect. Um, and not taking away from anyone else, there's certainly co- – very effective coaches out there who are working every day to be able to work with their clients and, you know, get some great results. But I think just having that certification is just one of those things that sets you apart. And I know that there's even a meeting in Houston, and I think all across, you know, certainly the world, there are local chapters where they can get more information, they can go to a meeting, they can find out about the benefits and see if it's the right thing for them. But I did want to ask you specifically, who do you work with as a coach? Uh, right now, just given my background being in the home building and real estate industry for 20 some odd years now, I tend to work with a, a lot of brokers um, uh, and, and new starting real estate agents. Uh, and then um, also, which would also be because they own their own biz- business, is entrepreneurs. Um, interestingly enough, right now, because of a calling and a personal calling, uh, uh, for myself is I'm actually now specializing in divorce coaching. Um, so I'm working with, you know, anyone who may be going through that season of life. And um, it's a growing field within the, the legal field. And so I'm diversifying yet specializing in, in that area as well. Well, that's an interesting uh, area that I would say it's kind of sad that it's growing, but I'm sure that, you know, people really do need a coach during that transition period to see what's on the other side of that relationship. So good for you. Yeah. And then growing, I mean, um, growing as a part of the not thankfully the, the divorce rate is actually declining somewhat. Um, but growing as a part of the legal field uh-huh. a, in that, you know, in the past attorneys, um, have been uh, kind of all of the above, coach, mental health, financial planner, and so forth. And there's a component of collaborative law now that's a growing part. And, uh, you know, whereas in some states mediation is required, now collaboration right. is becoming a part where the, the people involved are actually wanting to see the people walk out of this life change as a whole person. And uh, so it, in collaborative law, they've actually got a mental health professional, so a licensed counselor, that may, you know, something along those lines, um, and then a certified financial planner and the attorney in this collaborative process to help the people through. So it's not just putting it all on the attorney to do everything. And now as a component of that, you've actually got some real estate specialists that are coming alongside that path as well, and then the divorce coach that can help move the client forward versus stay stuck in that kind of that possibly that rumination cycle of what he or she has done, but help them move forward and therefore reduce costs on an overall basis and help the people move forward versus stay stuck in that, that what can be a very challenging time. Wow, that's fascinating. I had no idea. But I want to go back to, you know, really how you're known in particular in this area, which is really working with the home builders as well as the real estate industry. And so what kinds of work can you do as a coach with with those particular industries? Well, uh, it, it, it seems that I can do <laughs> as much as I possibly can and, and or, the, you know, the, the industries are, are willing. Um, you know, a lot of areas are change management, and I think I know you specialize in, in that as well. Um, my background is in the marketing field, so I tend to work with a, a lot of sales and marketing, but as a marketing person within home builders and real estate companies for 20-plus years, you actually interface with many of the, the departments, the divisions, that sort of thing. And I've worked all the way from Las Vegas to California to Florida to Texas. So I understand the real estate market on a, a, on a larger scale. Um, and, and, and so, you know, teams really don't change from state to state, from place to place. And so whether it be, you know, 
um, coming in from coaching the marketing team to, or to the construction team that interfaces 360 with clients and customers is really, again, going back to finding um, how we can set the alignment within those divisions, within those departments, and then move through whatever it might be, change management, what it may be um, mergers, it may be acquisitions, it may just be communication, right. <laughs> those sorts of things, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break and then come back, and I can't wait to do a deep dive into focusing on powerful people practices. I want to know more about that. So we'll take a short break and come right back. Stay tuned. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as a team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. You are listening to Promotion Protocol Live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Dr. Kim Nugent, and welcome back to our show. And today's guest is Christy Stratton, and she is a speaker, coach, and instructor, as we mentioned at the top of the hour. And her specialty area really is powerful people practices that directly impact your bottom line. And I read that focus, Christy, but I really don't know what that is. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? I know, isn't that fun? That's uh, PPP, I call it, and it's fun to say, right? All the popping of the P's. <laughs> but the idea is to <laughs> help you, you know, kind of remember that and, uh, and really drilling down into it is I've identified 11 powerful people practices. And when we focus in on those, we can really become the powerful people that we are. And I think within all of us, we know that we are powerful. It's just in those times and those places of life and business and that sort of thing. You know, how do we get there? And it's not just like a snap of the fingers where we become that, you just turn into the very, that very version of ourselves, but we have to actually take, um, you know, steps to get there. And I, as I mentioned, I've identified 11. And one of the first ones is that we change our focus. And that means um, we change our focus to empowering people. So the people practices are as leaders, as coaches, as employers, um, you know, and I think one of the things where it really comes from um, focusing back on the people is in the home building industry and in many industries, we, we focus on profits. And when those profits aren't there, uh, we tend to go change the process. And uh, as you may know, as many people may feel, that process tends to change in at least what, at least what I experienced in my um, career and my profession in the corporate world was that process would kind of change every two to three years and you try to get on board and, and then boom, it changed again when the profits weren't there. And so there's this ever ongoing change. And 
when the folks, when the people get on, don't get on with the new process, they don't really kind of, it doesn't fit with them, then what tends to happen is we change out the people. Mm-hmm. What I don't see happening, uh, and more so luckily and gratefully that we see that more today, but is really getting down and working with the people to change them, getting them and empowering them to um, be able to move through that change. And that's where the coaching component comes in as well is uh, really helping them find that alignment again with, with the company focus, um, uh, with the company core values. And so we work with them to change and the company then actually finds progress. And at the end, profitability and prosperity for all versus just profit. Always. And I I love what you said. I think one of the first things is I love the word focus. And one of the things that I know in particular with, um, you know, construction supervisors or home builders in particular, they have multiple competing priorities. And a lot of times it's really hard to focus. But, you know, I I, before I even start with focus myself, I start to have them identify where are you being distracted? Where are you spending so much of your time that really isn't part of the I won't say core values, but critical priorities that the organization needs to fulfill on, number one. And then number two, depending on the how long that construction supervisor or home builder has been with the organization, wherever they are, could be a project manager. And they started at the very beginning inside that industry, and now they've been promoted, which is awesome. But they still have a tendency to sometimes not develop their people because they think their way is the best way, and they don't want to give up some of those things. But I have them take a step back and just say, you know, did someone take a chance on you? Did someone invest in you? Did someone show you some things, allow you to do some things first and foremost? And they always say yes. And then I'll say, so another part of your role really is to be able to invest in your people such that they can become promoted and you can be promoted and it's a win-win for everybody so I love the fact that you started with focusing on your people for me it's always the way to be able to achieve the kinds of results that you want so what's number two well and and you know two is I actually hit on that um as well as is you know when we work together we create that positive and and long-lasting prosperity. So it's, again, in working together. But you've hit on number three is we actually acknowledge reality. And it's, they're not necessarily all in, in, in order right here, but we do. We, 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 uh, as I shared earlier about the, the presentation, the kind of the organic presentation I did with one of the builders, and uh, we, we look at what discourages them, what empowers them, what's current state right now. And then um, so we, we actually acknowledge it. <laughs> and mm-hmm. just like you said, we, we see what they're dealing with versus what we think they may be dealing with. And, and, um, and then we, we help them kind of also uh, part of that is then, you know, one of the other steps is to turn, I love to say, turn neg- negativity on its head. So, um, you know, I think one of the things that I've learned personally through my training and coaching is that we all have a different perspective. And, uh, you know, what we may see as negative is reality for another person. But if we can kind of turn that on its head and look at it in a different way, we might actually see a different perspective. Absolutely. And I I like that you said turn it on its head or look at it from a different perspective. And I think sometimes we're so task driven, particularly in that industry. It's just, okay, get the job done. We know what we need to do. Let's go. And yet at the same time, just to take a step back and and really evaluate some things in a new way, not just say, okay, we need to reduce costs and we need to maintain, you know, uh, no recordables and maintain our safety uh, record, those kinds of things. Make sure that customers are happy and that we have return customers and so on and so forth. And it's just like sort of blah, 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 blah. Up, but it's so hard to be able to take a step back. And I think acknowledging reality could be something as simple as, you know, depending on if it's a job site or something like that, you know, having a five minute stand up meeting to be able to collaborate and engage the entire group, not just tell. Because I think, you know, the the role of the new supervisor, if you will, is to become that coach for the team so that they can have the kinds of results that they all really want to enjoy. And uh, so I think all the things that you've said in terms of focusing and working together and acknowledging reality. So what are some of the realities that they've acknowledged? You know, um, you know, a lot of 
we've got to look at the things that maybe not we, we are as leaders we don't want to hear right um and and that is you know what discourages the people and and some mm-hmm. of the things that i've heard are you know again and you, you said the the word exactly is telling them what to do <laughs> is not really finding out what their perspective is you know and and then the stress of and i, I know in the sales world is that always inevitable quota Right. And kind of mm-hmm. the, the sense of the pressure and the, you know, always feeling that they're not achieving. And, mm-hmm. and while they, they are, and a lot of the times that, you know, builders think they're rewarding that, but they kind of have gone based on what they think works for them, but they've never <laughs> gone to the person. And, and really what we found out was just a simple thank you, you know, a Absolutely. simple, you know, great job. You know, I'm really like, I really hear you, uh, those sorts of things. Absolutely. So I love that. So I said last year, 62% of people at work were never said thank you or given any gesture of appreciation, which is abysmal and it's something we can simply change. I can't wait to come back and hear more about the people practices, but we have to take a commercial break and and, uh, stay tuned and we'll hear more from Christy Stratton. Horses, mystical, present, past and future, all in one, wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. This is BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you're listening to Promotion Protocol, hosted by Dr. Kim Nugent. And if you've been listening today, you know our guest is Christy Stratton, who is a certified coach with the ICF. She's a speaker and an instructor, and she specializes in home building and construction industry and has also added another area of specialty, which is really divorce coaching. But we were talking specifically about her focus on powerful people practices, and she has identified about... 11 of these top practices. A couple of them are focusing really on your people, working together, and acknowledging reality. So, uh, Christy, can you share a few more and give some examples about some other powerful people practices? Yeah, I think one thing is we uh, we lead by example. And if, at least to me and my career advancement and so forth, um, it's really interesting when I feel that someone believes in me maybe more than I do, it mm-hmm. kind of, it empowers me to want to be that best version of myself. And so it's coupled along by, okay, you know, knowing that probably inherently within all people, we do want to lead by example. Um, we may not know how, but when somebody else can kind of show us the way, uh, then we may or may not know the impact that we have on them. So, um, 
you know, and then making choices. And so the, the one that's coupled with that is, I, I like to say this, choice, not chance. And that's my one of my hashtags is we make mm-hmm. choices that are aligned with that leading by example. And the fact of the matter is, and I say this often, is darn my humanity, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and we're all human. We all make mistakes. Uh, but if we can actually get up with an intention of showing up, leading by example, and that we're going to make the choices, you know, 80% of the time that are going to be aligned with that, we're going to show up in the, in the best, um, best way we, we, you know, we can. Um, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be great. But it's going to be, we're going to bring the very best version to, of ourselves uh, as often as we can to the table, so to speak. Absolutely. And I think, you know, that when you said lead by example, one of the things that sometimes, as you say, people sort of struggle with that. I'm not really sure how to do that. And so usually my question back to them will be something along the lines of, well, who out there do you emulate or who do you who do you think exhibits certain leadership qualities or, you know, integrity qualities or has some kind of executive presence? And they can always name someone and they'll say, well, what does that look like? What does that sound like? What does that feel like? And then they'll start to describe what some of those behaviors are. And I think that's really important. So they can describe the actions and behaviors. They can describe the way the person communicates. And the other piece of it is if someone doesn't have a coach, which we always recommend, but if they don't have a coach, certainly finding a mentor inside the organization or outside the organization that can help them navigate that because no one can do this any job by themselves. They just can't. Um, This other thing that I love that you said, I liked everything you said, but one of the things that I loved was, you know, really learning from our mistakes. And we're all humans. We make mistakes. So what can we learn from this such that it can improve the organization? If you can kind of create that context or that environment or that culture inside your organization, it's just another example of a win-win. And documenting and training around that such that everybody's included. And it's not a make wrong. It's how do we learn from this? So. And then, of course, your comment about choice, not chance. So all adults love choice. (laughs) So I think your job as a coach is, you know, giving them some choices or asking those questions such that they can decide what's best for themselves as they move forward. Any other uh, top powerful people practices that you would like to share? Yeah, and you, you know, you hit on it too. And and probably the, the one that sums it all up is we, we actually, no, we actually make the choice in a way to know that no one does anything great alone. And so we realize that. And it's okay to ask for help. Matter of fact, it's better to ask for help than trying to kind of like put on the, the happy face of everything's fine and find that transparency. And when we, when we know that we have to, we've got to have others with us to excel and succeed. It's not just kind of that solo effort. We actually, are, of course, more powerful, and that's really where it sums it up. Absolutely, and I, I use this simple little example sometimes when people, and, and all of us have had moments where we're having our little pity party or we're feeling like we're the only one or we have to do everything by ourselves and there isn't anyone else we can count on. Just for a minute, stop and think about that. If you eat food at your house or if you wear clothes, you didn't get any of those things by yourself. So you had a you left wherever you're living and you got there however you got there in terms of transportation and you went to a store and there was a parking lot and there was a store that had to be built and there were farmers and then there's cashiers and so on and so forth. So just for you to get that food, you did not do that by yourself. The same thing, you know, when you're choosing clothing or whatever it happens is there, you know, there's a whole group of people that allow that to happen. So I think that sometimes You know, to be able to just think about a simple example and go, oh, you know what? You're right. I I don't I I haven't done anything by myself. I need these people. But I think there's a reluctance sometimes to ask for help. But I my experience has been even as you know, whether I'm working by myself, but working in a team, working collaboratively, and we have a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, as well as I do out there, and you've got to make that team. You've got to make, whether it's a mastermind group or some kind of professional organization or getting in a different conversation so that you can grow and develop regardless of what profession you happen to be in. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great example. Absolutely. So do you want to say anything else about uh, choice, not chance, before we move on to another question? 
You know, I think the other thing is, and that's an, you know, another hashtag, um, but more, <laughs> more we, less me. And that's exactly, again, then ties into, uh, and, and ties into we, nobody does anything great along. And if we can change that perspective to that it's a we, not a me. I often say the me, 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 I, I, I show. Um, <laughs> we actually move forward together more powerfully. Absolutely right. And, um, you know, I can't wait. To, we're going to take a, another commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to learn. I want to know how you even discovered these powerful people practices so that uh, we can share that with the audience. And then really, I want uh, the audience to know how your values can help you excel in business in your career. And we'll drill down to that. So we're going to take a commercial break and we'll come back and hear more from Christy Stratton. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back to Promotion Protocol. I'm your host, Dr. Kim Nugent, and we're coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And if you've been listening, uh, our guest today is Christy Stratton, who's a speaker, coach, and instructor. And Christy was just sharing with us the top powerful people practices, such as focusing on your people, working together, acknowledging reality, leading by example, choice, not chance, and really being able to learn from our mistakes because you are all human beings. But Christy, I really want to know, how did you discover these powerful people? practices well I, I think by trial and error <laughs> <laughs> through, throughout my career um, but also you know uh, and we, we oftentimes that is our best learning uh, we may not again like it but that, that is how we you know we keep trying something and we find out that it's not working and we we find what actually does work if we get the opportunity to live long enough and work long enough. Uh, but the other thing is when I was really trying to understand what it is that I speak about is I picked up the phone talking about nobody does anything great alone. And I um, interviewed some top leaders in the home building industry. And I actually found by asking them about um, values and because I've, I've I myself have found that if I know my values, I actually can set better goals and stick with those goals in a better way. Um, and so I wanted to find uh, a you know, way to go in and talk to corporations about that. But here's the thing, especially at least for me and my own experience in the home building world, is that if I pick up the phone and I say, Mr. Division President, can I come in and talk to your team about your values? He's going to be like, um, let me hang up. And I don't mean <laughs> that dis- out of disrespect, but his bottom line is I need to have more sales. We need to have more profits. Again, kind of profits, profits, profits. 
So I actually asked um, a, a longtime leader in the industry, uh, former um, president of uh, Trendmaker Homes here in the Houston area and, and Texas area, and had a conversation with him and uh, gained a lot of this information from him. Then I picked up the phone after that conversation and spoke with a gentleman that was the vice president of construction with the Pulte Group when uh, I was in the Nevada area, and um, he's still in the industry and gained some information from him. And then also a sales director, so different positions within the industry, talked to them. And what I saw aligned here was they were all kind of saying the same thing in a different way, and it aligned then again with what I had learned along the way and was able to then, with help of others, put those words together that this is, again, focusing back on the people and the choices that we make along the way to um, create those that, that power together. Well, I think if our listeners are really listening, you just gave some of the best uh, career advice that anyone could have, and that is regardless of whether you're a speaker, a coach, an instructor, you're working for a corporate environment, uh, you're a brand new author, going out and asking people for advice, seeking you know what's going on is probably, one, it's gold. Uh, people love giving advice, but it also helps you at the same time. And I think that, you know, uh, particularly people who may be, Mm, I'm going to say 30s and above may think, hey, I already got this. I don't need to do any of that. Nothing could be further from the truth because that for me is a blind spot. If you're not willing to sort of look at new ideas and ask questions and seek people out there that you really look up to. I mean, certainly the former president of Trendmaker is a fantastic builder, a great reputation, you know, stopping and giving advice to someone. Yeah, all of those things are really important. And people, you know, are willing to make the time. If you're respectful and ask the right questions, you know, I think that's that's fantastic. So I hope that everyone wrote that down. If you're not driving today as you're listening to the show, I hope you drove, wrote that down as something that you could actually apply immediately on Monday of next week. So how, you know, I'm, I'm thinking the listeners are probably going to want to know a little bit more about knowing their values and how knowing their values can help them in business and their career. Yeah, and and you know what I I think I may have mentioned this too is that you know when we're going into goal setting and creating something in our business or our personal lives, we kind of and I've I've had the opportunity to speak a lot of audiences and kind of ask the same question and and I, I liken it to a trip and you know when we think about going on a trip, oftentimes when I ask them what are the first things that we need to know about going on a trip in their mind, they already find themselves there at the destination. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that there's a way that they have to get to that destination. And that <laughs> depends on where they start from. But then also we may then say, okay, well, I'm just starting from this place, financial place, whatever, whatever that may be. But we don't really understand what it is that is a deeper motivation of what's driving us. And with values, if it was true for you when you're about eight and it's still true for you today, it's probably a driving force. But what I've also found out is a lot of people don't know their values. And oftentimes, if we don't know our values, we end up living on somebody else's. So we may set goals that are for someone else, not ourselves. And then we don't keep up with them. So that's really where, and I get a little pushback from folks because they don't really, they want to get into the action and the doing of the thing. <laughs> they don't want to take that, stake, <laughs> take that step back to take giant leaps forward and really kind of know who they are uh, intrinsically, you know, and, and, and don't understand the power in it. But I really think it's, it's kind of like a tree. When we're really rooted deep in the ground, we're very strong. And we are not, when the winds come and the, the hurricanes come and the freezes come, we're going to be able to stay rooted in those values and be able to make those better choices. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we are so busy today, all of us, you know, we're in the doing mode, right? But we're not called human doings, we're called human beings. And that being part comes really from, you know, really being clear about what our values are, what our purpose is. And, you know, there are a lot of people probably who <clears throat> went to school and, you know, followed in some path, and then they look up 20 years later and go, I'm not in the right thing. I'm, I'm not even being 
my values aren't even aligned to what I'm doing in terms of my career, you know, and that's an unfortunate place to be. But that's where the value of a coach comes in specifically to be able to help them navigate, you know, maybe it's still in that industry, but maybe it's doing something completely different inside of that. Maybe there's another match for them as a possibility so that they can be fulfilled. Because, you know, for me, this show is all about finding your dream and living your passion and your purpose such that you love going to work every day, whether that's working for someone or whether that's working for yourself or becoming a speaker or a writer or coach. And I know that you're in addition to ICF, you're also uh, members of other organizations. And I'm sure that from that perspective, you get a lot of advice and help. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm very lucky to be a member of the National Speakers Association uh, here in the Houston, Texas area. And I tell you what, they um, I, I, I'm involved in many organizations, but boy, this, this organization has been one that really exemplifies these powerful people practices is just coming and lifting you up and helping move you forward. That's great. And I certainly know uh, NSA as well, and there are chapters all over. And if that's something that uh, our listeners have never participated in, we both highly encourage you to seek out a local meeting and see because they're there really to help you in ways you never even imagined, regardless of what your career path is. So we're going to take a, another short break and come back and listen to some more golden nuggets from Christy Stratton. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back, everyone. We sure hope you've enjoyed listening to Promotion Protocol today, and our guest is Christy Stratton. We are coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Dr. Kim Nugent, and Christy was just sharing with us about how values can help you excel in your business and your career and the organization that she's a member of that have helped her excel in her own career in terms of seeking advice, regardless of what that industry happens to be, and people have been really helpful in that area. But, uh, Christy, what are Three top practices people can use in business to create great companies and success. Oh, gosh, three top. Um, <laughs> I, I think first, uh, that's, that's hard to drill down, is um, asking for help, being okay with that. Um, to uh, take a step back and look at where they are and give themselves that, that gift uh, and in doing so, kind of slowing back, slowing down a little bit. Um, one of my one of my coaches throughout the years has, has said, um, "As it turns out, slower is actually faster." Uh, so if we take a step back and we look forward, we're going to really excel. And then third, um, you know, really find a way, find someone, find a tool, whatever. That there's a lot of tools out there on the res- uh, uh, on the internet and so forth. Is really sit down and really get to know your values. 
know what's important to you and um, and then make the choice to align with those values and live from those values. Well, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that I, I ran across, I actually have used this tool for the last couple of years and it's fantastic and it's called Pathway U and it's really a purpose driven, values driven assessment to help define education, career, pathways and what you're best matched for. So yes, there's fantastic tools out there online to be able to help people and to go through some of these exercises for themselves. It helps you become more self-aware, helps you uncover those blind spots, helps you create better companies and your own personal success and that's what really everyone wants today and so I think that you know asking for help and taking a step backwards I love that saying because looking forward uh, and then you know really finding a tool but seeking out advice and not being afraid to ask questions or ask for help because in this day we all need each other more than ever before in order to be able to reach the kinds of things that we want to achieve personally and professionally so um, what I'd like to know Christy is and I'll probably have another question for you right after that but I am sure our listeners are just dying to know how to reach out to you so how can they get in touch with you well here's the thing and I know a lot of you know people may not pick up the phone and call but I love to have a personal conversation with people and so I invite them to give me a call at 281-944-8043 281-944-8043 if they want to they can certainly go to the internet and go to christystratton.com and they'll find information there and um, if they are on social media, they can also Google me. They'll find my, my um, uh, business page on Facebook and so forth. I do have a, a live Facebook show that airs every couple of weeks, and it's called Powerful People Practices. And we're interviewing uh, top leaders in and around the industry and asking them what their perspective is on what powerful people practices are. That's awesome. So, you know, I know that you said that you are an avid writer, and you, I know soon that you will be a published author. So when is your book coming out? Oh, goodness. I, how <laughs> people practice myself? I've got to make time to, to get in the copy edit. Um, I will be this spring, and it's really looking at growing through uh, the losses of life. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much, Christy, for being on our show today. Thanking, I really want to thank our listeners and appreciate you listening to Promotion Protocol this week. This is Dr. Kim Nugent, host of Promotion Protocol. We are live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And next week, my guest will be Kim Gustafsson, who will be talking about On Becoming a Leader. Thank you all for joining us and have a fantastic week. Thank you. This has been Promotion Protocol with host Kim Nugent. Tune in each week as Kim gives you practical tools to redefine and lead your way to career success and create your legacy. Here on Promotion Protocol with Dr. Kim Nugent. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.